Today's Gospel reading is from John, chapter 11, verses 1 to 45, the story of the raising of Lazarus. The facts are simple enough. Jesus has dear friends in Bethany, Martha and Mary and their brother Lazarus. Lazarus falls ill, he dies and is buried. Jesus goes to Bethany, calls to Lazarus, Lazarus comes back to life again. Job done. But there are some odd things about this, not just a dead man walking. For a start, when you hear that a dear friend is sick, the instinct is surely to go and visit them at once. Jesus hears that his dear friend Lazarus is seriously ill and he stays put for two more days. Why the delay? What's he waiting for? He knows he could prevent his friend from dying, but Bethany is in Judea and Jesus is a wanted man there with a price on his head. They tried to stone him to death recently. Jesus also knows he's nearing the end of his ministry his God-given task and his earthly life. Is he afraid, perhaps? Is it fear that holds him back? No, surely that's out of character. John gives us Jesus' own reason for delaying, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Isn't the most likely explanation that he spent those two days in prayer, wrestling with God, trying to understand what's being asked of him, and praying for strength to face what lies ahead. Jesus and the disciples reach Bethany where a crowd has gathered. John describes beautifully how people react to, to a death. The weeping, the restlessness, the if-onlys, all familiar to those who've lost a loved one. Martha hears that Jesus is arriving and goes immediately to meet him. That's the Martha we know, the busy one who can't sit still. She almost reproaches him. If only you'd been here. Then discusses the theology of resurrection. She does believe that Lazarus will rise again at the last day. Martha also believes that Jesus is Messiah, but she expresses it in Old Testament terms. He's the one who is to come. Jesus replies, I am the resurrection and the life. It's actually astounding, a public declaration of divinity. That I am is the holy, unsayable name of God. Then Jesus asks to see Mary, who's still waiting in the house. When she comes to Jesus, she echoes Martha's own words. If only you'd been here. Then she kneels at his feet, weeping and worshipping. Her sorrow at her brother's death finds some comfort in his presence. Then comes the shortest verse in scripture. Jesus wept. The wailing of the mourners, his love for Lazarus and his grieving sisters in their pain, spills over in deep emotion. The Greek implies indignation as well. Anger, perhaps, at the pain that death causes. Jesus asks, where have you laid him? The very question Mary Magdalene will ask someone she mistakes for a gardener on Easter morning. They make their way to Lazarus's grave and Jesus tells them to take away the stone that seals it. The practical Martha is appalled. She can only think of the stinking corpse. But Jesus says, didn't I tell you that if you believed you'd see the glory of God? Now Jesus prays for everyone to hear. God, I know you hear my prayer. Show the world it's true. He puts his reputation on the line in this very public miracle. And it's also his own moment of truth. Jesus needs to know God's power over death if he's able to follow the terrible road to Calvary. Here, Jesus prays his way into the Father's will for him, discerns what he must do, and seeks strength to do it. It's the last sign before his own death and reveals his unique closeness to the Father, nurtured through constant prayer. And it also confirms God's own dominion over life and death. 
Standing by the opened tomb, Jesus calls out to Lazarus. Don't imagine a gentle wake-up call. Lazarus! This is a thundering shout that needs to be heard from beyond the grave. A pause. Silence. Except for the buzzing of flies and the thumping of hearts, waiting, fearful to see what will happen. Lazarus has heard Jesus calling his name and to the fascinated horror of the crowd looking on the figure of a shrouded man emerges from the dark tomb it's actually quite spine tingling Jesus breaks the silence he tells them to unwrap Lazarus from the grave clothes and finally John reports that many from the crowd saw what had happened and believed in him we're left to imagine the excitement, the noise and fuss, the fear and wonder, and the celebratory party that followed. So what can this miracle say to us in the face of coronavirus? We're told to expect a high death toll, which will certainly bring mourning and sadness, weeping and if onlys, such as Lazarus's death brought to his loved ones. But giving way to anxiety and worry can also drain the life out of us spiritually. Resentment, selfishness and fear can leave us tightly bound like Lazarus in his restricting grave cloths. Social isolation and lack of human contact, limits on exercise and travel might make our homes feel as lonely as a prison or as cold as a tomb. And yet, this strange time will come to an end and it will surely leave us and our way of life changed. We know some people have been selfish, greedy and unkind, but that's been the exception. Already many good things have come out of this. Neighbourliness and generosity, appreciation, volunteering, not to mention clear unpolluted skies and free flowing traffic in the roads. Some of us have even learned new technological skills too. During the immediate crisis, the first and best thing to do is to pray as Jesus did. For once, most of us can't plead lack of time. Prayer deepens our friendship with Jesus and draws us closer to God. Our love and our faith will be tested as Jesus was. But just as he met Martha and Mary, he meets us at our point of need and brings comfort and hope. Just as he summoned Lazarus out of the tomb, Jesus calls us out of our lonely darkness. Responding to his call releases us from our prisons, fear, perhaps addiction, guilt, greed or complacency. Hearing Jesus' voice reawakens us, frees us from the indifference which makes us dead to other people. To answer his call is to find the eternal love Jesus came to bring, to share that love and know the joy and hope of believing. The good news is that today, Jesus still calls us to share his life, calls us by name, and whether that life be here on earth or beyond the horizon of death. For love, Jesus spoke the word that brought Lazarus to life for a time. God, who is love, spoke the word that brought all creation to life. For love, God's word became flesh in Jesus. He suffered physical agony, human cruelty and spiritual anguish. For love, he gave himself up to a degrading death on a Roman cross and, like Lazarus, was buried in a stone-sealed tomb. But he never stopped loving. Death couldn't hold the one who is full of grace and truth. The great news that burst out of that tomb on Easter morning is that through love, Jesus conquered death and lives forever. So we needn't fear death because Jesus calls you and me to be his friend and share his risen life forever. If it weren't still Lent, I'd shout, Hallelujah. Amen. The Prayer of Teresa of Avila Trust in God. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. 
all things pass. God never changes. Patience achieves all it strives for. He who has God finds he lacks nothing. God alone suffices. Amen.